Hey guys, I'm so excited to bring you a full-length episode today of what I view as a perfect fall day here on the farm. First, I'm gonna go out to the pumpkin patch and pick some of my gourds and pumpkins and set them all around to give that great fall decor. Next, I'm gonna make some really quick and simple baked donuts. They are like cake, but they are delicious and the glaze is out of this world. Then I'm gonna make a chipotle butternut squash soup. This has seriously turned into my absolute favorite soup. I'm finishing up with one of my favorite snacks, popcorn, but it's not just any popcorn, it's caramel corn, and it's easy. I know you're gonna be wanting these recipes, so there is a PDF in the description box below or head right over to thegrayboxwood.com and you can get all the recipes because they're amazing. But in the meantime, let's pick some pumpkins. Growing up on a farm was so wonderful, and that's why I love to live on a farm. I know how much work there is, but I enjoy every aspect of it. I love to grow what I eat and preserve it in numerous ways, and one of my favorite things is the large pumpkin patch I put in every year. Every year it gets a little bit out of hand, and I'm always like, why am I going to so much work? But come fall, it is so worth it as I set around all these awesome pumpkins and gourds. I try to grow a huge variety, and most of them are edible but it's also fun just to use them ornamentally around the house. By every door, I make sure to have a few of them sitting there on different things. If I had flowers in a flower pot or an urn, I usually take those out come fall and I start stacking up the pumpkins on top. It's really simple, but it really is super festive. If the pumpkins don't fit perfectly on the pot, don't worry. All you have to do is take a really good structured heavy duty wreath of any type. I just use a really neutral one and then it will give a good base for the pumpkins to sit on. This year, I didn't have a ton of really big pumpkins, so I really need the wreaths to give that good base to sit on top of the pot. Then I just look for pumpkins that will fit on top and I just start stacking them up. It really doesn't matter, but I do try to sometimes kind of put colors together, maybe monotones or monochromatic, but really, if they are homegrown pumpkins and gourds, you cannot go wrong. When I can, I also like to put in a few natural elements like bittersweet. I love fresh bittersweet, and if you can find it, it is so fun to use. The berry opens up and has a beautiful bright orange color, and it's perfect for fall. The rest is really simple. Wreaths on the doors, pumpkins and gourds in bowls in the house, Fall is so simple to decorate for because you're using what the earth has given you. Coming up next, I'm gonna go into the kitchen and make some really good baked cake donuts. They are soft, almost cake-like, and absolutely delicious with an apple cider glaze. You are gonna love them. Baked donuts are super easy. I already have my third cup of oil in here and I'm gonna add four tablespoons of melted butter. To that butter and oil, I'm gonna add one cup of white sugar and then three quarter cup of brown sugar. Slightly pack it and then dump it right in. Just like you would do with sugar and butter, I'm gonna cream this mixture. It doesn't cream the same way with all that oil. Now I'm gonna add my eggs one by one. I already cracked them into a bowl. One is just easier to pour them in that way and there's no shell in them than that way too. I always get shell on my eggs. So just keep that mixer running on low and start pouring them in. Or two. You know what, sometimes two fall in and that's okay. Once that's all mixed together, we can add in our vanilla and pumpkin. I mean, these are, of course, pumpkin donuts. Add one teaspoon of vanilla and one 15 ounce can of pumpkin. 
People always ask me if I do my own pumpkin or if I cook all my own down since I do grow so many. But honestly, canned pumpkin is so good and it's an all natural product. You might as well just use the canned version. Just mix that all together. Make sure the pumpkin gets really well combined with the wet ingredients. You don't want any chunks in there. You could of course use an electric stand mixer. I just think sometimes a hand mixer is a lot quicker. That's all mixed up, so now we're just gonna add in our dry ingredients. We're gonna add one and a half cups of flour. After the cup and a half of flour, we're gonna add one and a half teaspoons of baking soda. We all know baking soda is so important. It gives really good rise to these. Now we're gonna add the spices that are gonna make these pumpkin spice donuts absolutely delicious. You can use pumpkin pie spice, but I like to use each of the spices individually. I think they're fresher and they just taste better. So we need three quarter teaspoon of cinnamon, then a half teaspoon of ground ginger, and a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg. I like to freshly grate my nutmeg. I had a friend bring me back some nutmeg from Grenada, and let me tell you, it is absolutely amazing. You can use just ground nutmeg too. Mix all that together until it's well combined and no streaks of those dry ingredients remain. I never like to overmix my dry ingredients at this point, so just finish it with a spatula. Seriously, you guys, I cannot wait for you to try these. They are so simple and they are so fall. Since these are baked donuts, you do need a donut pan. But these are so much more simple than a yeasted donut. Oh, but a yeasted donut is good. But it's one of those things that when you have it, I think you will find yourself using it. Spray the pan well, even if it's nonstick. We're gonna start putting the batter right into our prepared pan. I'm just gonna use a quarter cup scoop and make sure it's about three quarter cups full. After each of the donuts is about three quarter full of batter, I'm just gonna smooth them out with a spatula. Just smooth them out, that way they're gonna bake evenly. You don't want any big holes or anything in your donuts. Once they're smoothed out, we're gonna pop them right into our preheated 350 degree oven. Set the timer for 17 to 20 minutes and you are gonna have amazing baked donuts. While that first batch is in, I'm gonna clean up and then we can get ready for the glaze. You can make this glaze while the first batch is baking. It's super quick. I have a cup and a half of powdered sugar in here and I'm gonna add a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. To make this a glaze, I'm gonna add two to four tablespoons of good apple cider. Just check your local grocer, see what you have that's in season. Apple juice just isn't near as good as the apple cider. Add two tablespoons to start with, then we'll mix it up and see if we need any more. I definitely need a little bit more. This is way too thick for a glaze. So I'm just gonna add another tablespoon and then keep mixing. You want a glaze to be runny, so check it. And you have to try a little bit. Mm, that's good. Set the glaze aside. When the donuts are done here in a few minutes, we can remove that first batch from the oven, let them cool a few minutes in the pan, and then on a cooling rack and start the next batch. You don't want to glaze them when they're steaming hot. You want to wait till they're slightly cooled. Once the donuts are slightly cooled, I'm just going to glaze them. And to do that, I'm going to put a baking rack right over a baking pan, and any of those drips are going to go right down in there. Just grab a donut, put it right down into that glaze, twist it around because you want as much of that glaze as you can, or at least I do, and put it right onto your rack. I've decided since these donuts are not fried, they're practically healthy. So go ahead and indulge on a few. I am not waiting till these are all glazed to try one. Mmm. Cakey. A little bit crispy on the edges. <laughs> They're so good. 
With these donuts done, I'm gonna run out and plant my garlic. You plant garlic in the fall to be ready for next year. So come on out and help me plant the garlic. Now that my garlic's planted, I'm gonna go right on in and make some chipotle butternut squash soup. To start my chipotle squash soup, I'm just gonna put a little bit of olive oil in the bottom of the pan, about three tablespoons. Let that heat up over medium high heat and then we're gonna saute some onion. When you saute onion, you don't want it to necessarily brown, you just want it to soften and turn translucent. So just wash it closely and stir it. It's always good to season throughout cooking, so add a little bit of salt at this point. Help the onions break down just a little bit quicker and it will make sure to give that salt in the beginning of the process. I'm one of those people that has soup almost every day in the fall and winter. I'm kind of obsessed. After three to five minutes, these onions are softened, so I'm gonna add in my chopped carrots. Carrots are gonna help sweeten this, give it some great color, and of course, some good flavor, but I really like that sweet flavor they give. After about five minutes of cooking, the carrots have softened and I'm gonna add in some cumin. I like to add the spice in now because it's oil soluble, so it really blooms in this mixture. Add one teaspoon of ground cumin. I know cumin sounds a little odd, but it really marries well with that chipotle spice that we're gonna add in later. Stir it in and let it cook for about 30 seconds. The cumin is cooked, so we're gonna add in some chopped tomatoes. Three cups chopped tomatoes. One cup of prepared carrot juice. That's just really gonna bring out that carrot flavor. And if you want, you can juice your own, but I'm not doing that. And then four cups of chicken broth. If you make your own stock, this is a great time to use it. But if not, there are some great bottom ones. This is a squash soup. So I roasted off some butternut squash in a 400 degree oven until they were soft and pierced easy with a knife and then scraped them out. So now it's all ready to go. Pour the four cups of squash right in. Now, this is a chipotle squash soup, so you have to add in some chipotle peppers. You can buy them in a can. They are like a flavor bomb. They have great smokiness, some spice. If you're a little scared of spice, don't add as many as I do. I've kind of, I think, burned out my taste buds, so I add in three. And since we're gonna puree the soup later, I'm just gonna add them in whole. When it's come to a boil, turn it down to a simmer, cover it, leaving the little jar a little bit, and let it go for 20 to 30 minutes until everything's really cooked through and is so delicious. While that's going on, let me show you how I like to make some quick pumpkin seeds go on top. Start with a cup of pumpkin seeds right on your baking sheet. Add two tablespoons of olive oil, one and a half teaspoons of salt, one teaspoon of chipotle chili powder. Yes, it's spicy, so don't add it all if you're scared of spice. And then one teaspoon of minced fresh rosemary. Stir it all together with your fingers, shake it out into an even layer, and then pop it right into your preheated 425 degree oven for eight to 12 minutes until they are dry to the touch and just beginning to pop. The soup's been simmering for 20 minutes, so I'm just gonna use my immersion blender and blend it all together. 
Don't worry, if you don't have an immersion blender, you can do this with a food processor or a blender. But let me tell you something, these are amazing. Whoa. Just blend it until it's completely smooth. This soup is ready to go, the seeds are ready. This is the perfect meal on a fall day. And of course, you have to taste it to know if it's good. Mm. Slightly spicy, that smokiness from the adobo. This is soon gonna be my absolute favorite soup for fall. And I think yours too. I might've just double dipped. Next, since the donuts were not enough sugar for me, I am going to be making a really quick and simple caramel corn. It's perfect in the fall. So I have my popcorn popped, and now I'm gonna make an awesome caramel corn. You guys, caramel corn does not have to be that hard. Have your popcorn popped and then throw a few ingredients together, and you're gonna have some great snacks. Just pour a quarter cup of corn syrup in, a half a cup of butter, and make sure to use butter. You don't want any of that fake stuff. And I always use unsalted. One cup of lightly packed brown sugar, and then a half a teaspoon of salt. I usually guess at my salt, but use a measure if you're not sure. Now I'm gonna put this over medium high heat and then let it gently boil for about three to four minutes. After that's boiled, you're gonna add some baking soda. You're just put in three quarter teaspoon of baking soda. This is gonna help it froth up and get really airy, but that's exactly what you want. Pour it right onto your prepared popcorn 16 cups of prepared popcorn, and you can pop it any way you like. Pour it on, stir it really well, then put it on two greased baking sheets. Just stir it until it is really well combined. You wanna stir it a lot, because you wanna make sure all those pieces of popcorn are coated with this amazing caramel. Okay, and I'm gonna just admit something. If there was a meeting, I am kind of addicted to popcorn. Any type of popcorn, I'm obsessed with. So, you are gonna see a lot of popcorn recipes on my site because I love it. But this really is a great fall treat. Having friends over, or if you're like me, just sit at home alone and eat all the popcorn. That is stirred together, so we're gonna put it right onto our two pans, just about half on each pan. You don't have to be exact. Just break it up with your fingers just to make sure it's kind of in a little bit more of an even layer. And then while it's in the oven, it just kind of dries out and helps that caramel to get a little bit harder. Guys, this is so hard for me not to eat right now. <laughs> I'll just try it. No, it's good. After it's on those baking sheets, we're gonna pop it right into the oven. A low 200 degree oven, stirring it about every 10 minutes and letting it go for about 45 minutes. Once they're done, just pull them right out of the oven. Mix it up one last time just to make sure. And of course, you can sneak a bite. I do all the time. There's honestly probably none left by the time I'm done storing. But you can always make another batch because now you see how easy it is. This caramel corn is great in the fall, spring, summer, winter. Really, I could have it every night. But now, you can too. I hope you guys enjoyed what my perfect fall day is here on the farm. I can't wait to hear about what your perfect fall days are. And if you like this episode, make sure to tell me because who knows, maybe we could do a few more. So get out there, pick some pumpkins, make some soup, and have a perfect fall day of your own. See you next time. <laughs>